Welcome or welcome back to Connect the Dots. I am Heather, your host for this adventure. This week, I'm releasing a second interview episode because, well, I can. It's it's my podcast. I can release things when I want to. But really, the, the true reason is, is this episode, along with episode three, um, is helping to set up the episode that comes out next week. So uh, episode three and four are helping to set up episode five. Uh, and so just a couple days ago, I released um, Imposter Syndrome, where I talked uh, with Tim about uh, how that presents in men and, and do they feel do they talk about imposter syndrome? Do they get imposter syndrome? And that was a really fascinating conversation, and I really appreciated um, everything that Tim brought to that conversation. Uh, today, I'm actually talking to his wife, <laughs> Lori. <laughs> uh, she and I have uh, worked together previously. We've both walked through career changes in the last six months, and we get together for coffee about once or twice a month, and we had these really um, kind of a lot of times we have lighthearted conversations, but a lot of times we have these in-depth conversations where we kind of talk through that experience of, of changing careers and, and what we learn from that and what we're seeing kind of in the um, industry or, you know, in, in that kind of job, yeah, and I guess the job uh, search industry currently um, or the environment of, of looking for a job. So um, I had her, uh, I asked her to come on the show uh, to talk about uh, the importance of knowing your worth. And it's a really good conversation. Uh, I loved listening back to it uh, as I was going through uh, the edits. And I really, honestly, the only thing I edited out was some was some dead air uh, that, that we had. So uh, this is the full, real conversation. Um, kind of no no holds barred about about feelings um when we went through our career changes and and reasons we did and and how we how we really uh both came to uh realize our worth uh so i hope that you enjoyed this conversation um let's get into it all right Lori, welcome to my podcast Hello, it's so good to be here. I'm so excited for everyone that does not know my friend Lori. Um, so let me give you a little backstory to to mine and Lori's relationship. So we used to work together. Um, we worked together at Apple. We were in the same organization, but between, I don't know, we just never worked directly together until we yeah. both got a rotation uh, as area managers and when that happened a couple months into that I find out she's moving to Clearwater (laughs) and I was moving to Clearwater and it was like hello and then we got addresses and it's like we're 12 minutes apart what And, and so through through we built this friendship through work and then now uh you know over these months of you know, over a year now, living in Florida, uh, getting together for coffee, and just there are so many things that that you and I have in common, Lori, and but also that we don't have in common, which is really great. I think why, why our conversations get so really in depth and cover so many things. But in this, you know, we've both ended up we've left Apple. We left Apple very close to the same time. Uh, for for some of the same reasons Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just incredibly thankful for your friendship your knowledge your support you have been such a supporter of me and my in this podcast like I just I'm so incredibly thankful for you Um, but yeah you have become such a trusted member of my of my circle um, you and, and then your family. I just, we, Jay and I love y'all to death. Uh, and, you know, we couldn't do life without you. So. Yes. Oh my gosh. We feel exactly the same. It's like the tribe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in the tribe now. 
Uh, but aside from uh, how I know Lori, what, uh, what other things does Lori do? Lori does everything. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she's a runner, a biker, not like a motorcycle, like a bicycle. Uh, but she'd be really awesome. Like I could see her on a motorcycle. If you're watching the the thing, I think you can envision this with the cat ears and everything on the bike. I, I think we got that. Um, <laughs> she, she's a musician, um, plays clarinet. What else do you play? A couple other things, don't you? Uh, trombone badly. Um, <laughs> I flute also pretty pretty badly. Saxophone though, I do saxophone pretty well. Piano is medium. Talent. She has singing bowls too, which I've never known anybody who had singing bowls, and they're so cool. <laughs> um, let's see. And then also you have your your day job, which uh, you do a lot of different things. It's your job. <laughs> you do pro like program manager. It's probably like the best. That's what I was going to throw out there. Wait program management. Describe. It's kind of like a bucket. Just throw anything in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you but you also have like you garden and you do you have you do karate with the kids no no okay they okay. want me to so the whole family does karate uh we they just got into it this year tim is a black belt that's my husband um uh but i i tried it's just not my bag. I love working out. I do workouts every single day, and karate is just not one of them. <laughs> but you have a lot of just kind of irons in the fire, and, and it's it all really stems back to like just how creative um, you are, and and I just I'm just fascinated, and I am just in awe, and like goals for me to aspire to to for all the creativity that you bring to this world so all right that was a really really long intro did i miss anything anything else we should share i don't think so (laughs) all right (laughs) maybe we'll see we'll find out (laughs) Uh, (laughs) we'll find out as we come across but one of the things the reason that you're here the whole reason other than you're my friend and i love to talk to you (laughs) Um, is when you and I went through that transition of leaving Apple and moving into our new positions, we both had this time period of where it was like, wow, I didn't realize my worth. I I didn't like, wow, I'm so much more than, than I thought I was there. Yeah. Um, and so I want to know, I've talked about it on the podcast a little bit about my personal experience and I'll add some things in today, but tell me from your perspective, like what was your experience in, in, you know, realizing, Hey, I got to get a new job or, or I want to get out of this job and into something else and then figuring out like your worth. Yeah. I've done a lot of thinking about this because it was a scary decision, um, to leave Apple a there were people that I worked with that I just adored and I miss them very much. Um, it's Apple, I, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of a big deal, right? <laughs> Got that vibe to it. Um, they were taking care of me pretty well. Um, you know, and it was where my career, like my real career really started. And so it was a big deal to decide to leave in the first place and the when i look back now let me say i wish that i'd made that decision much earlier um for a couple of reasons first just what i have discovered in in doing the leaving uh, which we can talk about later but also just you know facts you should be moving jobs about a year to a year and a half if you want to have um the most like lifetime income uh, is the current figure, and it might even be lower than that currently <laughs> because of just the market and how it is. Um, all that aside, all that aside, um, the the thing that made me leave ultimately, though, was that I had been working toward uh, growth in my career, that next role. 
I've been really dedicated to it. I had uh, almost five years of experience working the role. If you get, take into consideration the three rotations I had um, and other time spent doing that role, <laughs> which was an area manager role. Um, I had another rotation as well. And it, it was towards the end, not the end because we're still in it, but towards when people were thinking about going back to office. And uh, Apple really took a different stance than most companies where they, we had been working from home in our roles for like 12 years. Apple Care works at home. A lot of us do, not everyone, but a lot. And um, we certainly fell into that category, but Apple decided that uh, there would be no growth opportunities for people who work from home. Um, so they wanted everyone to come back into office. Uh, if you had been working from home before the pandemic, you were welcome to stay there, but they made it very clear that there was not going to be those growth opportunities unless you wanted to relocate to a site. Well, that was very disappointing <laughs> after putting in almost 10 years of dedicated work <laughs> to try to get to this next level. Uh, to be like, oh, well, you're there. You have all of this experience in it. Everyone loves working with you. All of this positive feedback, but uh, you're gonna have to move your family across the country to somewhere you don't wanna live and leave everything behind if you want to continue on that path. So uh, that was kind of the final straw for me <laughs> personally. Um, it was hard to get motivated after, you know, the thing you're working for is taken away. And so it, it seemed like the right time. It seemed like the right decision for me to start looking elsewhere. The market did help, I would say. It's a great job market right now. There are many positions available. Um, many more than ever positions are from home. So you have that wider berth to kind of choose from too. Um, but it was scary. And when I started applying, you know, I didn't know exactly where I wanted to go or it felt like I, my resume was frustrating to me because even though I had multiple rotations in other areas, my title was still team manager. And I didn't want to lie in a resume or stretch the truth, but how do you represent that? Because other people aren't going to know what rotations are. Yeah. Like they're going to be like, say what? What did you do now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was, you know, it just, there were times where I was like, oh my gosh, I've done so much learning and so much development. I got my MBA. And I'm still not qualified to do any of these roles. <laughs> like, grr. Um, but, I, and I applied to a lot of places too. Like over the course of months, um, I hundreds probably of applications. <laughs> and I didn't get a lot of um, bites, nibbles, didn't, didn't really get that. But I just kept at it. And the first interview I got was so eye-opening and it really changed because I was kind of feeling sad, <laughs> you know, yeah. at that time. Um, but the, the, when you actually get to talk to someone, that is such a game changer and you can divine so much information from it. At least that was my experience. And they were like, thirsty for Lori. Mm. It was great. It was like, oh my gosh, you had the best interview answers. You were so prepared. Your lighting is so professional. Um, like just asking me questions about how I was accomplishing these things. It was I mean, one of my, my hiring manager was actually so open. He was like, the best interview I've ever had. I have interviewed hundreds of people for this role. Thank God you're here because I cannot interview anymore. <laughs> and I was like, 
wow, okay. So some of the things that I did in Apple interviewing, interviewing other people, working on my interview skills were helpful. They, they held up, they did a good job. This is the, like the first bit of encouragement, right? And then, um, then they, when they, when they made me an offer, it was more money than I was making. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I didn't realize that it would be. And I, and that kind of opened my eyes a little bit more like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> Because that's, that's one thing, right? So for people to understand, when you would do when at Apple, when you do a rotation, it's an unpaid internship. Yes. <laughs> they get you in a higher level, typically a higher level position than you are, or in a more specialized position where typically more money would, would be in play if you were there permanently. Um, they get you in that position for X number of months. Sometimes it's, uh, it's up to 11 months they can keep you before they have to, like, I think, yeah. offer you a job. Um, but they get that for whatever you're making. Experience is how you're paid. <laughs> Which is great, I think, up to a point. And then it crosses a line and becomes exploitative. Exploitative. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it definitely felt like it crossed that line for me. Again, just some of the reasons that I had started to consider leaving. Um, but yeah, so looking back on this, though, I realized, and now that I've been in the uh, workforce with this new company, I've really realized that my skill level even being new in this new company is I, like, there's not a humble way to say this. It's outstanding <laughs> compared to some of the people who have been there a long time. And it's because I had all of this experience from Apple, even though my title was team manager, technically, um, which is like the very first leadership position, right? Kind of a low level leadership position there. You do so much project work as a high performing manager, so much project work. You do program launches where you create entire new lines of business um, and are the driving force behind that. You do disciplinary and HR stuff all the time. You're chosen for these uh, rotations that can give you even more experience doing these things. You facilitate meetings, you make meetings, trainings, you often give trainings. Like there are so many skills, speaking, presenting, facilitating, uh, just project management, the list goes on and on that may not feel like they're captured under that title of team manager, but that doesn't mean you don't have them. Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are there. And so, you know, a lot of things can go into maybe making you feel like you don't have these skills or that you're not as valuable as you are. The title being one, not getting opportunities when you've been working toward it being another. Um, and even looking right at other job postings, they don't use the same language that you're used to. I was at Apple for almost 10 years. I'm very accustomed to that language. And it could be just looking at another role is like, oh, I don't have any of that, but you might. It's just a different language. So you gotta kind of translate and learn how to translate and then how to represent the skills that you do have. And I was thinking about, okay, if I could give advice to other people that are considering the same thing and not just from Apple, right? If you're at a company and you've been there, they all have the legend of themselves. They all want you to think that they're the best place in the world. Um, th so this is universal. Um, I would say, 
Heather, you did something that I thought was incredible. And that was having someone else look at your resume. I know you've talked about that on the podcast before, but it is such a good idea because you're all entrenched in it. (laughs) You're so close. Um, But having someone else look at your experiences and what you've done and all of the skills that you have, they're going to give you that perspective where it's like, oh my gosh, you've done what? Okay, when was that? Wait, you had so many, you had this many people reporting to you? Like there's just so many things that are not gonna occur to you that someone, a third party that's not as close is going to be able to look in and see. So that's something I would absolutely recommend to anyone. Yes, that was, so like you said, that first like interview was like your kind of aha moment, right? The, the resume re, uh, the resume rewrite for me was my aha moment of like, I get it back and I was like, who's this? (laughs) (laughs) Who's she talking? Is this my resume? Because having been entrenched entrenched that sounds very terrible uh it wasn't bad apple's not a terrible place to work let me it's not a terrible place to work there are some things that i'm we i'm not happy with that they have done uh or in people and some things that people the way people have treated other people like there's some of that but that's gonna be everywhere so let me put that out there that is everywhere has problems like that um but having the, the six years that I was there, I, w- I started as a team manager. And so my title only changed when I rotated um, into recruiting and then into an area manager um, and, and always returning back to team manager. But I was also only applying for Apple internal jobs. So everything on my resume was very apple Yes. All the terminology that if an Apple another Apple person read, they could understand. They knew exactly what we were talking about. So, and I even, I taught resumes. I taught resume classes at Apple, but I was teaching how to write your resume for Apple. So when it came time to do my resume for external, I was just like, I have, I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't get out of my own head. So having someone else and and I've since then I've had several people reach out to me asking me about it and I've given them the same person that did mine on Fiverr that's where I got the uh, somebody to do it I think I paid 75 80 bucks they redid it they updated my LinkedIn like so so it's all cohesive and it all matches Um, best money I've ever spent in in terms of like starting my journey in looking for a new position because it really did make me see that Oh yeah, I've done all of these things Um, and you don't see it when you're in it. Yeah. And then you're able to talk to it. Like once you, it is put in your, in the forefront of your mind that you have done and accomplished all these things. You're like, oh yeah. And I remember that I was there. Mm. (laughs) So you're able to talk with it with ease and you can bring that into your interview. You know, you can bring that into your cover letter you can really utilize it once you're able to see all of these valuable experiences that you have racked up. And I think the other thing um, that I would just be wary of, I know I was, is like your inner dialogue and how you're talking to yourself is such a big deal. And it's so easy, um, especially in a competitive place where you're surrounded with other very high performing, smart people who are also gunning for the ne- their next role. Um, and when you, you know, lose out to that over and over again, yes, you're super happy for them. I was always rooting yes. for my friends. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> but it does hurt that it wasn't you when you're working very hard to get to that next step. So, um, you know, it's easy to slip into the, well, I just wasn't good enough, or they have something that I don't, or um, just doubting yourself or doubting your experiences, even if you recognize them there. Um, And just be careful about that. Just like, 
don't talk yourself down. You need to be your cheerleader. You need to talk yourself up. Right. Yes. And, and I think it's, you know, if you've been somewhere where your title has been the same for so long, um, I worked at a company many, many moons ago that they, like my title started as one thing, but then they started adding additional responsibilities. So I went to my boss and was like, excuse me, can I please change my title? Um, <laughs> because I was now covering four states and, you know, doing all of the training and all of the marketing for these things. And I was like, a sales support manager does not equate to what I'm doing. I'm like, is it, you know, what, let's talk about this. And so we changed my role to a director of training and marketing because sales support manager was not, yeah. was not equivalent. Um, and so I think you've got to, sometimes if you, if you feel like your title's not enough, some places you can't like Apple, we, we couldn't have gone and been like, ah, oh, you should change my title. They wouldn't do that. But depending on where you are, there's that opportunity to step up and say, Hey, I really feel like I am doing more than this title says. Let's take a look at this. Um, especially if you work for a company that does not do annual performance reviews. Uh, that company did not. <laughs> wow. Thank so you. you had to be your own advocate if you wanted uh, a raise, if you wanted a title change, anything like that, you really had to advocate for yourself um, in that in that situation. I'm sorry, I think I took us down a different rabbit hole. Let's come back. Um, you <laughs> it's easy to get comfortable in, in where you are too. So earlier you and I were talking and you had mentioned um, the the legend of a place and how it's sometimes that's hard to overcome. Uh, so tell, let's talk a little bit more about that. I think that that contributes to that fear. Like with Apple, your first thing that they tell you is that Apple is harder to get hired into than it is to be taken on to Harvard or something, right? Like yes. it's it's so exclusive. You've made it. Congratulations. You did the near impossible by being selected to be a part of this elite organization, right? And then you also know and you see all of these good things happening and they're legitimately good things, right? You're getting compensated pretty good. You do have an annual performance review. In fact, a lot of energy is put into development of skills. You get coaching, there are trainings that you get to go to. Um, you get to give feedback. Uh, there are all of these extra things you get to do. You've got great equipment. Um, as leadership, you had control over your schedule quite a bit, which was really nice. Um, so you see all of these great things. And of course, the company is talking about them because they know they're great. That's, <laughs> that's why they, they want you to stay. They want you to be a happy employee. That's part of the reason they're doing them, right? So there, it becomes this, it becomes the legend, the legend of Apple Care. <laughs> and it, it's not totally fair because you don't have a point of comparison, right? And you probably can't have a great point of comparison because you're only entrenched in this one area. You're only surrounded by this one thing. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other excellent places offering very similar things, maybe even better things that fit you better. I know my new company does unlimited paid time off. Pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking advantage yeah. of that. <laughs> um, so there are, there are, you just don't know what you don't know. And when you're surrounded by the legend, it can feel like, well, I'm just going to stick it out here because there's nothing better. Don't do that though. You don't know what's out there. There are a lot of great places out there. There are sometimes better things, sometimes worse also, but like you have to do the work. You have to investigate and keep an open mind. I, th I think when, you know, thinking about like, 
that transition from where we were to now where we are and, and figuring out our worth and, and being able to see that, you know, one of the things that you and I have talked about a lot is like, we want other people to know that. And I, every chance that I have gotten when I have talked to somebody um, from, cause I've had, I've had lots of people that I didn't even interact with on a daily basis at Apple. When I put on LinkedIn that I had moved, you know, I'd left Apple, you know, gone to Amazon. I had so many people reach out to me and they're like, how did you do it? How did you leave? And so I take any opportunity I can to tell these people, like, you are so much more than what you think you are right now. Like, you have got to take a look at the projects that you've done, the hard work you've put in, the skills that you've gained. Take titles out of it right? And just think about skills that you have done. You were probably overqualified for so many jobs right now that are yes. three levels above what you're doing at Apple. Absolutely true. Hands Be- because, down. Yeah, because you get stuck. With, I'm just a team manager. I'm just a this. No, no, you're not. You're so much more. And it just, it breaks my heart because it's like, I want to help them all. Like, let me help you all. Like, find your worth. Like, yeah. But I get it. It's hard, especially if you've been there for a long time. You were at Apple longer than me, but, you know, we, we got amazing, we got RSUs and, and there were bonuses and vacation time. So, right, you earn more vacation time as you, the longer that you're at a company. And so that's hard. Those are hard things to give up even changing jobs for me, like I lost a week of vacation year one than, than what I had at Apple. And so it's like, okay, like for one year, I got to, you know, suck it up and, <laughs> and not take as much vacation. But there's some trade-offs where I'm actually at an organization that's that's pretty flexible about where I work from and, and the, the ability to, um, you know, not be nine to, you know, nine to five every day, right? Oh, you want to come in a little early, you want to stay a little late, like work around what you got to do. And that makes it, so, so it's okay. It's like, fine, you know, oh, we're going to go visit family. Cool. I'll work from there. It, yeah. You know, I don't have to, I can um, offset the loss for a year uh, of that time. Um, I feel like there was something else we were going to talk about in regards to this. So you'll have to remind me because you have, you, y'all, Lori is much more prepared than I am. (laughs) Um, we, we had to move this, uh, recording. And so I did not have my preparation done, but she did because she's awesome. (laughs) Oh man. What was next on our list? I'm looking that time of day here in Florida, by the way, where my office gets really hot. So you're looking at the video and my face is really red. This is why there's, I don't even understand the temperature problem that we have in this office. (laughs) I think there's, so the thing that I see on here is about, it's, it is so related. In fact, you could sub the word i said don't accept less than your you deserve but you have to know your value before you can demand what you deserve so even if you're not looking to move these are all good exercises it's a good idea to have someone external to you see what you've done and tell you oh my gosh wow you have so many skills that you've developed It's a good idea to make sure that you're speaking kindly and to keep an open and learning mindset so that, you know, if something comes up and you have this golden opportunity and it's like, wow, that you're not so scared. So I talked earlier about the line that it was for me when I started thinking about leaving. That's not going to be everyone else's line and that's okay. But by knowing your worth, you can demand what you deserve. And so just keep that in mind, right? It's always important to know what your value is. Staying, going, doing whatever, having a day off. (laughs) You got to understand that so you can get the things that you deserve. 
Oh, I really like that. I really like that thought. I think too, one of the things, if it, even if you're, like you said, not looking to move, but knowing your worth, it can help you when those times get hard as well. When maybe you're not getting the promotion or there's not the availability, um, or you just have a tough day with a, with a boss or a project or, or, or something and you, and you feel like, gosh, like I'm, I can never do anything right. I had so many of those days where it was like, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what I did. It was never good enough. And I was like, I just felt worthless. I was, I was very down and stressed. And if I knew then what I know now about myself, I wouldn't have let it get to me so much because I would have been like, you know what? I'm doing a, I'm doing a hell of a good job here. (laughs) And, and you, uh, your opinion on this matter doesn't matter. No. (laughs) So, uh, and that's something I've taken into the role I have now of knowing my worth. I know what I, I bring to the table. I, I know what, I, I know what I don't bring to the table as well. Um, and I think that's knowing your worth knows what don't you have it, it too, right? So if I'm not good, I am not good at like good, good at the math thing. Like the, I can make a pivot table, I can do formulas, but it takes me a very long time and I usually have to call in reinforcements <laughs> to help me. So yeah. I know that's not a skill. So I know if I'm looking for something and I want to find, I want to make sure, you know, I'm using the things that I know that I'm worth, I'm using my worth. I know I'm not going to go to something that's heavy on that stuff. Mm. Did that make any sense at all? It totally does. In okay, fact, I, it's, <laughs> it's funny. I was just having a different conversation about how you can't be everything. Um, and so like, if I apply that to looking at um, uh, postings or job positions, if you have 90% of what they're asking for, but you're missing one skill, apply anyway. Oh my gosh, <laughs> please put your name in. That's their wish list, right? That's something I've heard you say, Heather. Yes. That's their <laughs> wish list. Um, they might not be holding out to get the dream because it's not very likely they're going to find it, frankly. And one of the great things about understanding where you're you're not great at is that it forces you to find people who are. And that is a great relationship building there. Um, right now, I work with someone who is just like a technical guru. Mm amazing and he does all of the technical stuff in our relationship (laughs) work and I do all of the project management and organization and communication part because he does not like that part he doesn't want to be good at that part but that's okay I got you (laughs) yeah that's the part I love and so we're like a dream team it's amazing so you don't have to have everything um, and you don't even have to have everything to go ahead and put your name in and apply for a position either. No. In, in thinking about applying to, um, when you are redoing your resume, right? And, and you think, gosh, so team manager, that doesn't equate to this, you know, director, this program lead, this senior, whatever. That, oh, I'm not good enough. Don't worry about that, right? take the first section of your resume, whether it's highlighting, you know, projects that you did or pulling out skills that you have that you can talk about. If your title doesn't equate to what you're applying for, then make sure the beginning of your resume shows them that you have the experience. It shows them right off the bat, hey, you're looking for somebody with six years of project management experience. Guess what? I have eight. Eight yeah. years of project manager experience doing X, Y, Z and this kind of thing. Here's some data and blah, blah, blah. And then when they look at your, you know, when you they go and they look at your job history, it may say team manager, but in your bullet points, you call out the projects that you've done. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're speaking to those things. It may not have been your title, but it's what you did. 
Right. Uh, and that, and that, I'm giving that advice from from a, a hiring manager perspective <laughs> of uh, of just having gone through this of hiring somebody and people would apply for my role and I would look at their resume and be like that has nothing to do with what my job is and I can't tell quickly what experience you have or how you'd be a good fit so I'm sorry next next uh don't you you get six seconds (laughs) you get about six seconds to draw in a recruiter or a hiring manager to read farther so make that first six seconds count (laughs) good advice oh there's a whole there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a whole whole podcast coming on on that particular subject Mark. in the future i don't know <laughs> what episode because i don't know when this episode's coming out so <laughs> maybe i'll maybe i'll coordinate it this one will come out before that episode because it would be the week before that 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 topic so thinking ahead <laughs> Oh, Lori, what else? Any, what, what other good things do we have? I should say, we, you, <laughs> you, you, you brought a lot more to this conversation. <laughs> oh man. Um, let me look back through interviews. I know we've talked about them before. I will add though, that if you are someone who has practiced and honed their interview craft, you're going to be great. <laughs> like, please. As, as I, I'm sure, Heather, you have this experience too. But even my husband does interviews for his company. And sometimes I can hear them in the background. Um, people who have not practiced interviewing, we know right away right away and it's like 95% of them so <laughs> don't I, I just, it's just the truth it's just the truth I like a lot of people don't know how to prepare for an interview they don't have someone there to help them and it's kind of sad people need that um, but if you're not getting if you if you are getting the feedback and you are doing the work and you are practicing you're, you're going to blow the person out of the water. So don't be sad. And I mean, I, like thinking about this in an Apple context, there was such a high level of doing that in Apple Care. Um, we practiced it all the time. We talked about it all the time. We talked about it with our um, people all the time. Like it was a huge topic of conversation. And it, I'm so glad that it was because it really makes a huge difference. I mean, you think that you're doing okay and you're getting this feedback and sometimes I know that it can even feel like I'm never gonna get it right or I've done a hundred of these (laughs) and there's always something that I miss or some little thing that could be better, but that is the polish. (laughs) Like, Even without the polish, you're probably gonna have a leg up when you go out there and start interviewing but if you if you do that work i'm telling you it 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 is a whole a whole package if you're looking to to move you're looking to 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 leave where you are and and go out any or looking to just move up in your own company wherever you are if if you've taken the time to really redo your resume and update it and get all of the all of your worth out there in 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 print um then you you owe it to yourself to invest the time in preparing for those interviews um there are when i was interviewing for amazon i watched so many youtube videos i so many because there's a lot of them out there if you type in Amazon interview there's a ton on YouTube but it was so helpful to get an understanding and they're very and just like a lot of companies are very focused on star format uh, situation task action result result being huge so if you are currently if you're even just the grumblings or like maybe I'll start looking soon go ahead and start taking inventory of all of your data 
all of the results that you have. Um, and when you hear the words data, right, we, we need to know the data. Remember the data is not just numbers. It's also and anecdotal feedback, you know, actual you know, responses that you got, <laughs> you know, because not everything is quantifiable by a number. So know that you, you should be tracking your data. I am terrible at this. I'm just going to say that I'm working very hard to get better at tracking my own data uh, and keeping up with it over the course of a year. Um, but as you're preparing for interviews, if you have that information, then you can start to build out your scenarios. You can write them out. Um, that's what I did. I wrote them out so that I knew I was going to hit every single thing because interviews bring about nerves more that you can practice, the more that you know your information, you know how to relate it uh, to different exam, you know, to different questions, the easier it becomes. And then your worth, you're showing it off up front on your resume. You're showing it off in the interview. You're right there in front and the doors are, and the doors will open. I love that you said showing off. Um, I think I even heard someone say, I don't want to toot my own horn recently. And I was like, eh, toot it. <laughs> you need to represent what you do. If you're doing a good job, let the world know that you're doing a good job. If you have got an outstanding result, tell them about your glorious, outstanding result. You have to represent the work that you do. It's a part of knowing your worth. It all comes back to that. Um, but you should feel comfortable and not awkward about being braggy, outright braggy about your accomplishments. So true. So true. Stop boasting if it's facts. That's right. Yes. I love that one. <laughs> boasting if it's facts. All right. Well, I know we have been chatting for quite some time. Uh, and so <laughs> we could talk for hours uh, about this uh, as we typically do on our coffee. <laughs> when we go get coffee. <laughs> um, but I, I will let people know. So in our fun episodes, um, Lori, I, I've invited Lori to be part of our of our fun episodes. We're going to do a little bit of a little happy hour. I've got a couple different couple different girlfriends that are uh, I'm going to have on the show and we're going to do like a little a fun happy hour. I don't know what we're going to talk about. It's it's just going to be free form and and fun. That's the whole point of a fun episode, right? That's right. Uh Lori, do you have anywhere people can find do you want people to find you online? Is there any contacts that they should you want to share with the world? Oh no. Um I mean I'm pretty much everywhere. Um, I was not prepared for this part. So sorry. <laughs> um, you can find me. Um, I, geez, I don't even know what my handles are. Isn't that terrible? Uh, you know what? You can find me uh, at Lightforge Emporium on TikTok. That is a new a uh, small family business that we've just started. So we can use all the support we can get, but we're doing laser engraving. It's pretty cool. The latest artwork, mm, so cool. I'm so fascinated. I can't wait to come over and see it. <laughs> and see pretty this neat. whole operation. And, uh, and if, I, and if, I get, if I'm, by the time this episode airs, if I'm on TikTok, it's Lori's fault. I'm converting everybody, Lori's come fault. to TikTok. It's better here. Lori, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate you. And I will see you uh, probably this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> see you soon. Thanks. Thank you again, Lori, for hanging out, having, I just had such a wonderful conversation. This, just thank you so much for being here. I cannot wait to have Lori back on the show uh, for a happy hour episode that will in, air at the end of June. Uh, so I've got to start putting those pieces in place so I can get uh, get this core group of people together. Uh, we're going to do a virtual happy hour for our uh, week five episode, which will be in June. So those are week five episodes. They're always fun episodes. 
Um, if you enjoyed this conversation, please come over to Instagram and join in. Uh, I, I've got a post up for the episode today. Um, and so I've asked a question out there. So please, you know, come over there, you know, have a conversation with me. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts about knowing your worth. Uh, kind of, if you've struggled with this, kind of just let me know. I'd, I'd love to love to make that connection with you. Um, and make sure you're subscribed to the podcast uh, and or the YouTube channel, please. Uh, if you uh, if you don't mind, right, this, this definitely makes sure that you don't miss out on any new episodes that come out. Um, and all the links for the, the podcast website, um, the show notes, uh, or they're in the show notes uh, or the description. Uh, so, Check, check it out if you're listening to the podcast go check out the YouTube channel if you're listening if you're watching on YouTube hi uh, you can go follow me on your favorite podcast app as well so in case you can't get to YouTube and you want to hear the podcast you can hear it there all right so um, yeah it's gonna wrap it up for us today uh, I had such a good time this week uh, sharing these two conversations with you like I said the um, uh, putting together kind of what Tim and I talked about with imposter syndrome uh, and what Lori and I talked about um, in regards to knowing your worth. These two things are going to come together and really help um, add some depth to the conversation next week. Uh, Week four of the month is all about navigating the workplace. So we're going to talk about uh, some some stuff that has to do with, you know, working. All right. It's been a fantastic day. That's going to wrap us up. Uh, As I always want to make sure that you know and remind you uh, that you are loved, you are worthy, and there are great things ahead for you in this life if you trust and believe in the Lord. We'll see you next week. Bye.